Hello again, you're with the Week in Politics. On Wednesday next, voters in the three-seat constituency of Mead East will elect a TD to succeed the Fine Gael Junior Minister Shane McEntee, who died tragically just before Christmas. Most interest seems now to centre on how the Labour candidate will fare. Michal Lahan has been to the constituency this weekend. <laughs> have led for the political parties for several weeks now but this show is coming to an end this week when voters go to the polls on Wednesday although everyone it seems has not yet tuned in to this by-election I haven't heard anything about the by-election like oh man but uh, all I just know when I do my shopping like oh man you're, you're using your head as a calculator like oh man times are hard I had my own business I had my own house now now I'm on the label like oh man those types of issues have been dominant on the campaign trail so far for the 11 candidates. The constituency here saw many houses built during the boom, especially in its southern parts, close to Dublin, and that has a particular relevance these days. I live in an unfinished estate, and it uh, has pyrite in it as well, on some of the houses, not all of the houses, and yet we pay property tax. Have you got notices this week that you have to pay it? Oh yeah, I received it in the post this week. So, like, they're collecting their pensions, we have to pay. It's extremely difficult if there's only one person working in the family to try and go on your daily basis and, you know, raise kids at the same time. I got actually my letter the other day for the house, not the household charge, the property tax. You know, this is coming in, there's like, they just keep coming at us all the time and they're not giving anything back. You know, they need to do, they need to sit down and realise that there is people out there struggling and they need to help them. Voter turnout is expected to be highest in the northern, mainly rural areas. But the familiar grim themes are universal throughout this constituency. A lot of young school-going people, college-going people still in the area. You know, I see them in the clubs and the GA club and all that. But I know that once they get out of college and that, and with their quali qualifications, they didn't have to leave. And has the GA clubs been affected here yet? Oh, there would be, yeah. yeah. All clubs have been affected, yeah by young people. Every club in Mead, as far as we can see, you know, has been affected by young people leaving. You can see, like, there's a turnover, huge turnover of shops coming and going in this area on this, the main street here. You know, you'll see there's a new shop open. They're open for a couple of months and then they're gone, you know, so it's a sign of the times, really. I'm not saying there's an easy solution. The times are in, the country's broke. But obviously there's money, we're, I'm sure it's the same as we can make in other areas, you know. Uh, we heard this week about the bonus has been given to Bank of Ireland, you know, the CEO and the Bank of Ireland, you know. It's immoral, immoral, you know what's going on in this country. For all the problems facing many people here, the general view is that this election is likely to be won by either the candidate from the biggest government party or by the one whose party led the government up until two years ago. And that report by Michal Lahan, who joins me now, as does Michael O'Regan, political parliamentary correspondent of the Irish Times. Michal, uh, you talk about the two frontrunners there, but it really is hard to see past Helen McAtee, the Fine Gael candidate, isn't it? I think so. Um, the Fine Gael vote here the last time was over 40%, uh, well divided between Regina Doherty and the late Shane McAtee. There's a lot of votes that would have to be lost. Nonetheless, Fianna Fáil's campaign has been vigorous. They've been on the ground. The party leader has been down there a lot, and they are expected to go very well. But judging by the national polls again this weekend, they still have a little bit of a, a battle on their hands if they are to win that seat. So as of now, it looks like Helen McEntee is the front runner. Surely, Michael, it would be a stunning uh, victory or Fianna Fáil to pull this off. It would be a, an important victory. Not too sure stunning. I mean, I, I think we have to park in some respects. Well, well I mean, OK, they were on about 40% in that constituency oh, they were, in 2007, they were, but they yeah. went through the floor, down what, in the mid-teens? They were, Sean, but 23% down. Yeah, yeah, um, in fact, 23% down. But let's park the figures for a moment of the general election. A lot has happened since the general election. First of all, it was Fianna Fáil's worst day, arguably in its history. So we parked that. Uh, since then, Fianna Fáil has been rising in the polls. Government satisfaction very high. For instance, that business... Dissatisfaction vote, high. Uh, sorry, government dissatisfaction quite high. That, that figure today, 59% less likely to vote uh, because of the, for the government because of the property tax. Now, if you look at it that way, uh, Shane McEntee highly regarded, Helen McEntee a good candidate, but that 
24%, close to 24%, that disappeared from Fianna Fáil in a one-time stronghold, the days when Noel Dempsey was the political master of a, a then five-seater. A lot of that vote is coming back to Fianna Fáil. Now, if it comes back in any significant way, and if the dissatisfaction with the government means that Helen McEntee doesn't do as well as people uh, are predicting, then I think Senator Thomas Byrne will win the seat. And Michal, uh, a lot of questions being asked as well about Labour. Uh, they seem to be on something of a hiding to nothing in Mideast. Labour uh, really put the, the big guns out this weekend. Pat Rabbit was there, Ruri Ken was there on Friday as well. They have a, a candidate who is an affable and capable candidate, but it is uh, a situation where it looks a, a daunting task, to say the least. Sinn Féin, as it stands, looked like the party who will come in third. Uh, Labour fighting it out for fourth place there. We also have some other candidates in the race. Uh, ben Gilroy of Direct Democracy Ireland, which are a politically uh, registered, they are a political party registered, have quite a big campaign going, especially an online presence. It'll be interesting to see how they, they do. Uh, we also have Charlie Keddy, Jim Tallon, uh, Garrod O'Brien and Mick Martin or other independents there. Seamus McDonough of the Workers' Party was out canvassing. In and the yesterday. Greens, of course, looking to make a comeback, Michal. Uh, the Greens, yes, uh, the Greens looking to make a comeback. A lot would depend, I think, on the transfers of Sinn Féin's Darno O'Rourke. Now, Jerry Adams has been making it clear to supporters and uh, Meathies, don't uh, give your transfers to Fianna Fáil. It depends, depends how that will do. Labour's big challenge here to come in ahead of Sinn Féin. It'll be a bad, bad day for Labour if it doesn't come in ahead of Sinn Féin. And how would you rate their chances there? I mean, Sinn Féin have a fair bit of ground to make up there um, if they are to surpass or to take, overtake Labour. They have, but again, uh, a lot will depend on commuter land, the so-called breakfast roll man and woman who were courted so assiduously in that famous ad which you produced earlier, Sean, by Labour in the last election. And if you look at that commuter land, they're affected by uh, cut in childcare, uh, the promise that wasn't kept not to increase third level fees and that if they come out in any si significant number it'll be a bad day for the government parties. Yeah, I mean again Garoldo Bochel the Green Party candidate we didn't actually name the Labour candidate, he's Owen Holmes um, uh, Michal, an issue as well about um, uh, about, about the, the voting hours has Phil Hogan, is he being accused of pulling some sort of a stroke about that? Well I think some of the opposition parties are making two points uh, that's 8am until 9pm they say that would take out many of the commuters uh, who commute into Dublin for work because it isn't, rather if it opened, the polls opened at 7pm. Uh, also the fact that they're closing at 9 at night. Uh, some would say that guards and nurses who might be uh, quite unhappy with what's happening in relation to their, their pay uh, would be on a full shift throughout that period and wouldn't get back to vote when if it was open until 10 they would. So that's, uh, that certainly has been raised by the opposition parties. OK, do you want to make a prediction, Michael O'Regan? A few fall. Senator Thomas Bourne, I predict. OK. I think Helen McEntee will, will win. OK, well, we'll know all about it on Wednesday, or well, Thursday, I suppose, the vote's being counted. Um, Michal Lehan and Michael Regan, thank you for being with us now. Before we go, a quick look at what's on in the houses of the Eroptus now.